Hey, I'm Stella. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about my top 10 payment songs. So payment is in the rock band for in 1989 in Stockton, California. And they were mostly acting in the 90s. To a certain extent, you can say that payment defined in the rock. Number one is Trigger Card's Wounded Night at 17. Uh, so Trigger Cut is the second track of Payment's debut album Slanted and Enchanted, released in 1992. And in my opinion, it is a representative track of the very early Payment's lo-fi secular rock. And the lyrics of Trigger Cut are kind of elusive and oblique. They are full of nonsensical imagery and random scenarios mixed together. It's almost like a postmodern poem by the poet Stephen Markmus. <laughs> he makes a big deal out of nothing and then sings semi carelessly yet confidently about it. In this regard, St Payment's lyrics have some similarity to that of the early IEMs. Uh, by early IEM, I'm thinking about. I'm, think, I'm thinking of the album's murmur and reckoning period. So, I assume that Stephen Malkusman tried to imitate it a bit of IEN in that. Just guessing. <laughs> However, I think Payment's lyrics are really their very essence. They are more of just a component contributing to the whole vibe of Payment being Payment. As for trigger cut, I am never triggered by it. I think that's enough, yeah. So number two is In the Mouth of Desert. I remember when someone said that In the Mouth of Desert is the best song ever possibly created. Well, I have too many favorite songs, but I can agree and see where they are coming from. Like, how can anyone not like these songs? Uh, like it's incredibly infectious and um, even more infectious than Sugar Cut and Summer Babe and maybe even more infectious than COVID-19 <laughs> Sorry, bad joke <laughs> And especially at the zenith of the song where the fuzzy and raw instrumentation and the chorus come together It's make you want to dance and jump like a pinata being hit by 10,000 sticks It's Payment of favored Prozac that are available to the term in all the shades of their sound. I don't know, maybe. Number three is Zurich Estate. Well, for whatever reason, I just really like the name. I don't know why. Uh, Zurich Estate. The phrase of meaning, you can also say like Helsinki is crushed. Vienna is stolen, Warsaw is bitten, something like that, whatever. Nan in its octave sound the European city's name, plus a passive tense. And there you have it, you have magically created a rather pavement like zoning. Whoa! And, and Zurich Stain is certainly in my top three pavement songs. Like, it's one of the first pavement songs that I got really, really obsessed with. Lyrically, the song seems to be about giving up or doesn't really bother to remedy a failed argument or relationship, which is a very payment attitude, you can say. You think it's easy, but you're wrong. I am the one who have the problem. So, according to Stephen Markmus, uh, this song is about staying in his ex-girlfriend's sofa, and I guess probably an argument stemmed from that. And I guess Zurich being from Switzerland means the argument stains a form of peace and mutuality between the two people. So, generally, Zurich is stains is a short, simple, lurid-like lo-fi ballad song. Despite being short and simple, it is melodic and full of style and attitudes. So I think it just really demonstrates their effortless talent for songwriting. Number four is Here Pew Section. 
So I mean the here pill section version, not the original version of here. Uh, it is included in Slanted and Enchanted, Lots and Redux, Double CD, re released by Matado in 2002, 10 years after its initial release. So the original version of here is a definitely a payment classic. And it is slightly different from the typical payment song. Um, it is bittersweet, contemplative, and melancholic. It almost feels like a playful, apathetic, swaggering payment during the daytime, finally showing their vulnerability and sentimentality during the nighttime. It reminds me of a few nights when I was feeling melancholy years ago, and I was drink. I I was drinking. A can of beer and listening to here, alone by myself on my own, so sad. <laughs> but personally, I just prefer the pill section of here to the original version of here, and I say that not because I have always had a thing for John Peel section recordings. Um, Stephen Malk must change the line of "I was dressed for success" to. I was dressed for suck. Yeah, suck. Then it follows an almost shoegazy few bristling guitar war of noise, and the whole song just rocks in James' heart. It removes the melancholy of the original version and adds dynamic momento to it without completely taking the sentimentality away. So, if you haven't heard of this version, you should check it out now, or here. Number five is Elevate Later. So after their debut album, Slanted and Enchanted, achieved underground success, Pavement released their second album, Cooking Rain, Cooking Rain, in 1994. So to a certain extent, Cooking Rain, Cooking Rain is objectively Pavement's best album, I think. Uh, I can show the CD, Cooking Rain, Cooking Rain. Uh, for some reason, I just do not own the Sunset Enchanted CD anymore. Um, I'm still a bit upset about that. <laughs> and I think Cooking Rain, Cooking Rain is also the best album to start with Payment as well. Uh, so I remember when I was 19 and I got into Payment with this album, and it was kind of like love at first listen. <laughs> so compared to Slanted and Enchanted, uh, Cook It Rain, Cook It Rain is less raw and less garagey, and it's more coherent and consistent in the chess quality, and more commercially accessible as well. But they still retain their catchy melodies and their bewitching personal style of natural cool nonchalance and the scruffy wry sense of humor. Elevate You Later is a representative song of payment performing perfect 90s indie rock at the peak of their musical career. Elevate Later has a mix of hopefulness and alienation, self-consciousness and rejection of identity under its sing-along melodies. And again, they made it without even appearing to have even tried. However, behind the scenes, maybe they did try quite a little. Why are you complaining, Ta? Number six is Fumo Jive. So for a long time, I can say this without question, without hesitation, that Fumo Jive is my abs absolutely my favorite top one payment song. And it's a very special song in their whole discography. So epic is not a word to describe payment, but Fumo Jive is a fairly epic song by payment standards. Usually their songs are of like two or three minutes, but like Fumo Drive is almost seven minutes long. It's actually about real content. Well usually their songs are just nonsensical stuff, nearly carrying carrying a certain vibe and mood. Stephen Malkmus once made a list like my life in 15 songs and Fimo Jive was one of them. 
So female drive is a roller coaster ride, transitioning between Malcolm's self mumbling, lethargic sounding soliloquy, and a long emotional guitar solo. It's also absurdly funny when Malcolm moans and repeats the line, "I need to sleep. Why won't you let me sleep?" The lyrics, "Good night to the rock and roll era." Together with the song "Thing," has a kind of easy dance show dread to it, like they were wondering what they were really up for in the rock and roll world at all. It's the final song of "Cookie Rain, Cookie Rain." It feels like they were ready to say goodbye to the heyday of their the rock success, if they have really cared to enjoy it at all. I think they did, maybe quite a bit. They just. Didn't really show it. <laughs> Number seven is grounded. So in nineteen ninety five, Payment released their third album, Wowie Zowie. Wowie Zowie.、Uh, it's also their most obscure and the weirdest album. So the cool type of Payment fans thinks Wowie Zowie is the best album of them. Just like the cool type of Beatles fan thinks the White Album is the Beatles' best, but like unfortunately, like maybe I'm just not the type cool type Payment fan. Like, it's still good, obviously, but I just have never been much of a Wowie Zowie person. And as for Grounded, the jangling guitar solo is so stunning, and I think it's the best moment of Wowie Zowie. So supposedly. The song "Grounded" is Stephen Malcolm's writing about his doctor and all that. Do you find it interesting? I don't. Well, just listening, just listen to, I guess. Number eight is "Shady Lane." The Payments' fourth album, "Bright in the Corner," was released in nineteen ninety-seven. It sounds more polished and more smooth than ever before. Around this time, also Payment members were getting into their thirties. It's not an album where Payment being their most famously Payment. Nineteen ninety seven was also the year that Radio Has Open Computer, Morris Mouse, Lonesome Crowded West were released. So to a certain extent, Brand at the Corner was not as groundbreaking and eye catching in nineteen ninety seven as Slanted and Enchanted was in nineteen ninety two. Nevertheless, I think Brian and Corner is very good. I personally prefer Brian and Corners to Wally Zoe. Uh, so Shady Lane is definitely one tuneful poppy song that feels like being a breezy summer day, full of delight and joy. Payments are payment are frequently described as having lots of West Coast California vibe. So at the end, I think everybody. You, him, her, and I wants and need a shady lane. <laughs> Number nine is "Day with IKEA." So "Day with IKEA" is a song from the guitarist Scott Kamberg, also sung by him. Sing as "Shady Lane" is a kind of like a poppy, tuneful song from Brother the Corners, despite the song being about boredom and wanting to leave IKEA as soon as possible. Personally, I cannot relate to that because I think IKEA is so fun. <laughs> and I have had dated IKEA before, but I have never really listened to this song. And I at IKEA, I cannot believe that. I think I should maybe I should try it someday, or be on a date or listen to date at IKEA. I guess. Number ten is "Darling of the Slipstream." Um, I didn't discover this song only until about last year, and it just drive me as well that how I had not paid much attention to it before, cause I like it so much, and Malcolm's Malcolm's vocal and lyrics are just adorably hilarious in this song. As the second song of Bright in the Corners, this song also has a kind of like a beautiful melancholic farewell vibe to it. There's no woman in Alaska. 
There's no curious in Vermont. There's no cause of Nebraska. So I'm very sorry that this list doesn't include any song from Terror Twilight. Uh, Terror Twilight definitely has its moments, but I think it's just not up there with the former ones. In 2000, Payment called it crits. And I'm kind of glad that they did. They have always been self-aware, cleverly attuned, and made all the right moves at the right time. They would have surely lost their mystery and legendary reputation if they became one of those bands who try embarrassingly hard to stay relevant when they no longer are. Someday in the dirt, just a few feet from the dinosaur's fossil, maybe archaeologists will find an old pavement CD and upon listening, and they will think, damn, those dinosaurs sounded alright. <laughs> alright, so I think that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.